Welcome to Tea Time with Shaylee and Amber, the podcast where we talk about all the shit that your horse wants you to know and what you can do about it. Amber is a horse trainer and a personal results coach, certified in Theta and Semitic Breathwork. Shaylee is an animal communicator who also teaches communication. Both knowledge seekers with the intention of sharing that knowledge and hoping that we can encourage the listeners to do the same. On today's episode, we reflect on the session that we had with Denise Byron, an astrologist and energy worker, and how it helped us understand our energetic connection better. We talked about Denise's read and our charts and how it gave us a non-biased understanding of each other. We also discussed the importance of having a sense of purpose and challenges of self-doubt and the benefits of working with an intuitive, insightful astrologer. As always, we hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as we did. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. We're super excited to be chatting with you guys again. If you missed our episode last week, it was not you, it was me. And we think, we don't know. Um, (laughs) We kind of talked about the transitioning of our animals and grief and that process. And then we talked about the parallels emotionally and physically we have with our animals and how deep those parallels actually go. Like the mirroring is like, it's so literal, it's insane. Um, So that episode was our like revelations. And I feel like within that episode, we were like having revelations in the current moment. Like we were talking and being like, oh my gosh, yes. And what about this? So listen to it. Let us know what you think. Um, Today, we want to talk a little bit about astrology and like our energetic connection, our being Amber and I, um, our our energetic connection together. We had um, a session with Denise Byron. She's an astrologist. She's an astrologist. And like, what else? Like she does a lot. She's like an energy worker, right? Like, yeah, she's got some super intuitive gifts that she whips out sometimes, but she does all kinds of stuff. She has different groups. We're going to have her on the podcast. Um, but yeah, she's fantastic. Super cool. It was awesome. She like read my chart first, which we won't succumb you guys to, um, or subject you guys to listening to all the things, but it was actually really cool. She like talked about all of my like uh, creativities and my energetic sensitivities and how like the work that I'm doing is in this role. And it's funny because Amber and I have such a hard time labeling ourselves when it comes to the work that we do. And she got like halfway through the call and was like, I just can't call it animal communication anymore. Like your energy is way too big for that. It's not just animal communication. And I'm like, I know, but what is it? (laughs) So it was really cool to, to hear that. And, um, I think we're actually going to put some of that meeting in this actual podcast so that you guys can hear how Amber and I mesh together and then maybe get your own charts, right? I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll set it up for you guys. What she does is she takes both of our birthdays and birth times and where we were born and she puts them in her little computer and then she smashes them together. So I've done this a couple of times with different, um, people I facilitated stuff with. And so I thought it would be fun for us to do that since we are embarking on several different little projects and it's good to understand how you work well together and then also understand the other person better so that you can flow better together. I would say if I was like married and like, or in a relationship or any of the things I'm even going to have my kids done for sure. Um, (laughs) it's so useful, right? Because you get this non-biased information that gets shown to you. So you get to, you know, see it, hear it and honor it and, um, and keep that in the back of your mind when you're co-creating things with other people. Um, so if you're, if that feels fun to you, uh, we'll put her information in the show notes for you, but for now we will go ahead and we'll let the, um, portion of our, charts being together red let you hear what she had to say it's kind of fun and then we'll meet up with you after and chat about um what how it was for us so when you've got two charts it starts you could see where you know the energies are focused and combining and there's so much life and it's just fabulous actually just fabulous so first first place i look is over here 
um, Shaley, you're in blue, so you can see um, your Pluto is interacting um, deeply with Amber's Mercury and Uranus. So here's how it works for me. Amber, Amber is a channel. Okay. Amber is just got like this antenna. This we'll call this her antenna, her radar antenna. <laughs> and then here's her mouth and her communication. And it's coming from the mystery. It's coming from this other place. Well, Shaylee, hello, you've got your Pluto over here, right? And you're, this is the hugely psychic element. Again, pushing the boundaries of the mystery, pushing the boundaries of the edge. And the two of you, oh my God, it's just like, you, you know, Shaylee's pushing the boundaries of the edge and Amber's like, yeah, okay, I'm getting this. I, I, I've got this idea and, and let's do this. And, and, and you must, and this is where I actually think this Capricorn and um, in Amber's case, her Virgo energy and Amber, and I've talked a lot about this, where that, that grounded energy can actually be super helpful because in order for the two of you, when you come together to really light up the space, you need to have a sacred space. You need to have structure. You need to have a container because otherwise it's going to go everywhere. Okay. And so when you're creating something, which you do very powerful, whether, you know, the podcast is just one small piece, but it's a powerful piece. Perfect actually for the two of you, but when you're doing retreats or workshops together, um, have that sacred container, make sure you have a safe enough space for yourselves and for everyone else and that there's an agreed upon set of guidelines so that people know how to take care of themselves. The horses know how to do that. All right. We know this, the horses know how to do this, but that there's, you know, the ability for you both to shine by being spontaneous. And here's the thing, the spontaneity, you're both smart enough to know that there's only there's certain times where spontaneity isn't going to work. And that's that groundedness that you both have, whether it's Capricorn or Virgo, you, you know, that you're creating something powerful. And so you want to ahead of time, create that agenda, but then be able to throw it out completely. If you feel <laughs> that the energy has already shifted and you need to go deeper. Yeah, we so this is that at, go the, ahead. at the retreat or at the clinic that we just did with everybody. Me and Shaylee kind of did stuff together. And like the last day was it the last day or no, it was the second day, I think where we woke mm -hmm. up in the morning and we were like, okay, what's it going to look like? And it was literally mm -hmm. an yeah. hour. I'm like, play a list. I'm going to put the play together. I don't do it like, but it was so good. It was the best day, I think. Yeah, it was really good. Well, I think that you two, you both have gifts. And then when you combine them, they're really, they're, they're, they're uh, supporting each other a great deal. Um, yeah. As long as people feel safe, as long as there's safety for the horses, as long as you have the right container for you, I would want you to just open up and see where are we going? Where are we going? Sometimes, and you probably both know this, I think you've proven this, that when you set an agenda, that energy already starts to flow in from the moment you set an agenda. So it's not a bad idea for you to set an agenda, create an organized form. You know, that's good because then the energy starts to flow in for everyone, including you. And it can happen so quickly that you're going to need to adjust during the actual event. Because from the moment somebody signs up, that healing energy, that energy is already moving. Because that's the kind of container the two of you are setting up together. It's pretty profound, actually. Okay, so here's Amber's Sagittarius sun. Shaylee, here's your Sagittarius moon, Sagittarius north node, Sagittarius rising. Um, oops. Um, so the, the Sagittarian piece is fun. So this is not just seriousness. 
this is fun. It's fun, serious work or serious fun work. Or, yeah, yeah. So there is, there is this life and everything I said, you know, to Shaylee about the horses and the, you know, being, this is Amber, this is true for you as well. So, I mean, it's all, it's all, you know, you're coming together, your luminaries, sun and moon being in the same sign are a really awesome match. Really awesome match. They fit really well. You can just, and again, believing, trusting, not needing to have it be perfect. Both of you will benefit from that. Okay. Doesn't mean don't do your pre-work. It just means you got to let go. Enjoy. Have fun. Okay. And then Amber, you have a really interesting um, moon in Aquarius, which gives you a much bigger picture and perspective. You have the ability to love in a, a very big way, you know, and to see things from some people will say aloof, but I would say objective, um, being able to see a bigger picture. Interestingly, your moon is nearly conjunct Shaylee's Saturn. So that Saturn, which again, Shaylee gives you the container to be able to do the, the um, what are we going to call it? The Other than the animal communication, the, 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 then where, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, that thing I that you don't really know what to call ourselves. We have issues yeah. with labeling. <laughs> yeah, labeling, exactly. It's that, you know, whatever. But anyway, the two of you together, again, you both bring some elements of being able to be present for knowing that the future um, depends on our abilities to change and to grow and to evolve and to awaken. And when so Amber, when you see the bigger picture, feel the bigger picture, Shaylee can put that into a, as ironically, a structure, the, her work allows that vision and that, you know, it's like together you can do this. It's, you know, having um, the vision and the, the abilities coming together. So it's like a good a good synastry and a good synergy um, of togetherness. Now, very interesting. You both have part of fortune. I have part of fortune in Taurus. We all have part of fortune in Taurus. Um, this part of fortune in Taurus is very much about being in the body. Is that yeah. The one? Yeah. This one. Yeah. It's about really using the wisdom of the body and understanding how rich the earth is and how deeply um, in, you know, we, we, all our souls chose to be in bodies. Let's put it that way. And I'm just going to be blunt. I'm, I can't speak for the two of you, but I'm pretty sure that there've been a plenty of times where I've been like, really, mm. really? Mm. I know. I, I, I know I, I should be able to walk on top of the pool as a child. I used to be like, I know I can do this. I, I'm absolutely certain that I can walk on top of the pool and I would just keep trying and keep trying. And I, I was like, nope. And then I would, okay. So I'm like, okay, well now I'm underwater. So now I was absolutely certain I could breathe <laughs> under the water right? There's got to be a way I could breathe under the water. Okay. Well, apparently we decided to come into these bodies that don't do those things very often. All right. So getting used to the body, getting used to, um, the pain that the body can go through and the healing through that and learning from that, but also the pleasure. And so this is really, really important. Um, probably most important for Shaylee um, because of the way her chart is designed, but, you know, equally important for you too, Amber, um, your body, your soul has been through a lot of pain. It's very visible, even if you don't want it to be. Um, and so where's the pleasure? And so there's an element of wellness. The part of fortune really speaks to wellness, wealth, the root word, you know, many 
you know, if the etymology of wealth was wellness. So our wealth comes from pleasure in the body. So pain in the body is kind of the opposite of pleasure. But if we can learn how to to move through pain, to heal through pain without suppressing, denying, bypassing, whether it's spiritual, physical, emotional, mental pain, then we can find more pleasure. And that's actually something the two of you share and I share with you in a different way. Um, How can we utilize being of the earth, being being of the earth, we're earth beings right now. How can we use that to our to the very highest and best to help with healing on all levels? Not to deny the body. What is it? You know, the old, the old thing, deny the flesh, only the spirit, right? No, it's just the opposite here embrace the flesh, embrace the body, embrace the senses, all of them, use them. So this is why Shaylee, when you blindfolded yourself and you like, didn't have that, that sense of seeing that way, it forces, and I think you did this with the people too, that it forces people to develop the other senses. That's a big part of what you've already done in your lives and will continue to do and what I've done and what I'll continue to do. Um, We have to, we're here to develop our senses. And, And for what purpose? Well, we live on planet earth and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. So how do we keep it that way? You know, and how do we, and this is the, you know, again, for the both of you, how do you help others access this incredible wisdom that exists within these beautiful beings that are part of our world here? You know, I know I can go pretty out there with you too, because you go pretty out there. Um, but, you know, if this isn't the only place where our souls land to have lifetimes, I would say, I imagine that this might be the only place where there's so much, well, there's so much challenge, I think, um, so much pain, but there's also so much beauty and so much color and so much richness. And so part of the reason I think we landed here uh, or checked in here or whatever we want to say, um, is to embrace the beauty, embrace love. You know, Taurus is all about love too. And so embrace love, embrace beauty, embrace creativity, embrace, um, the art of the senses, embrace the body. And none of us like to feel pain in our body. Who does? Nobody, nobody no thing likes to feel pain. So how do we move beyond that pain, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual pain? We work together somehow. And that's what you two are teaching. You're teaching how to do that in really profound ways. So using the um, connection that you have with the animals and the direct downloads, for lack of a better phrase, that they are sharing with you, um, you have an opportunity to make a change for many people. And that comes back to the Aquarian elements that you share in your chart. Okay. So the only other piece that I will address, do I want to go there? I think that's enough. I want to, I'll just see what kind of questions you have, thoughts, reflections. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess maybe like what sort of things would create, oh, because we talked about when we started doing this, it started out like, oh, okay, let's do a workshop together. And then it like mm-hmm. mutated and oh, we should do, like we talk so much. And I think our conversations mm-hmm. might be kind of cool. We should record them. And then it was like, okay, yes. well, it's a podcast. Mm-hmm. And we were both kind of like, well, since we have commitment issues, we don't know how long this is going to go on. So we're just going to keep doing this. 
until it's not fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so is there anything that we should be, have like somewhere in our conscious ness other than maybe outside of the realm of what we already know about each other I feel like we're pretty honest with each other and we just mm-hmm. fucking can't, we can't we're kind of just like we go with the flow and we figure it out mm-hmm. you know what I mean mm-hmm. I don't I mean I don't imagine that but if it's like oh this person you know would need you to pay attention to this or I don't know mm-hmm. does that mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah I, I think actually as long as you both know your mercuries are in opposite signs so Shaley's mercuries in Taurus um, Amber, your Mercury's in Scorpio, which tells me that you're both working on the same spectrum from opposite sides of the spectrum. Uh, it's ironic and fun all at (laughs) once because Amber, you're like, I know the mystery. I'm going to just, we're just going to throw it out and we're going (laughs) to open up. And I know there's a mystery here and this is what we're doing. And actually, normally, if Shaylee, if you didn't have all these other pieces of your chart, uh, this Taurus part would be like, no, (laughs) no, (laughs) I need things stable and secure. But because you have all these other pieces, stability and security kind of went out the window early. So it's it's not that you don't want stability. It's not that you don't want that container. It's just like you're really open to the conversation of because, you know, there's like you're like this 3D reality is whatever it is. But there's so much more than that. And you're aware of that. So the good news is you can have incredible conversations. Um, Shaylee, the more you um, connect with what your body wants you to say, the the greater the gifts are going to get. Okay. That's hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so it's, like I said, it's a lifetime of unfolding. So the best thing, Shaylee, for you is to engage in the senses. You know, and again, what is, what feels better? It's, it can be a lifelong unfolding. It doesn't happen today, but you know, again, so Amber, um, actually, let's see, I guess Amber, one thing I would say, Shaylee is really sensitive. (laughs) So it's not that you're not, (laughs) but you're, but your solar energy. Okay, your solar Sagittarius energy is really beaming hard on her lunar Sagittarius energy. Okay, so it's good, Shaylee, that you speak up if you need to. But Amber, it is, you know, sometimes it could be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Not to say you have to stop, by the way. No, you be fully (laughs) you. And Shaylee can take care of herself. It's not a problem. It's just a reminder there, there is a difference. So in terms of like an analogy um, or an idea. So Amber, you know, I know how much you, you appreciate the night and the moon and the moon and doing rituals and stuff at night. Um, You, so if you consider that appreciating the, the mystery of the night and appreciating the sensitivity of not being able to see, but being able to feel more, that's Shaylee. That's who she is. It's how she's designed. She's like the mystery of the night. Okay. So so beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) And then Shaylee for you, um, you know, when you're out, maybe you're think about this. Mm. So when a, when a, let's just say a horse shows you a trail ride. So I'm, you know, shows you meaning like you're in that horse's body practically, and you're able to feel and sense and see what it feels like to be on this fabulous journey in the horse's body on the trail ride. And it's, it's big energy, right? Really big energy. That's Amber. (laughs) Like my little horse. I know. I feel like we could do kind of I feel like the only time though that Amber's energy has been a lot for me, I literally just texted her and was like, I'm not on the same wavelength as you right now. And she was like, Oh no, don't worry. It's just falling apart for me too. And she like, totally like 
related to me. And then I was like, okay, good. <laughs> That's all it is. And so you, but you know, solar lunar. So just kind of think of those terms. Okay. That makes both a lot of, of sense for it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And you're both aware of what it's like. And both of you have deep reverence, right? So Shaylee, by rights, you're going to, oh, and actually this is the thing, Amber, you need time to yourself too. You just don't get a lot of it, you know? Um, so it's not like Shaylee needs, well, Shaylee might need a little bit more time to herself, a little bit more quiet. Um, yeah, I take a lot of time for myself, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do feel like I need it. Yeah. So if you're, you know, when you're doing um, a workshop, a clinic, a retreat, whatever together, you've got to build in time. Um, Amber, you build in time for creative, you know, I'm going to call it kaleidoscoping, um, which is a different word than brainstorming, but this idea of like, where are we going next? Build that in. And then Shaylee needs built in time for, um, re-nourishing in, in the silence and the quiet or, you know, maybe with music, but by yourself, you know, so to have a schedule that's boom, 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 would not be helpful for either, actually either of you just for different reasons. So hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, all right, let me think of something else. I like that question because it's like, okay, how do we differentiate? Um, well, and I do want to ask too, because um, Amber has been teaching me some of the theta stuff. And mm -hmm. then I started like, you know, theta yeah, so Rochelle. Okay. So yeah. I started taking Rochelle's class and stuff. Oh, good. I have been hesitant to really I know that I can do it with the people, but I'm hesitant because like Ken Amber and I, I won't step on our toes, right? Like I won't, we're not doing the same thing, even though what we're doing is very similar. Like, I don't want to take, a, I guess I am very sensitive to other people. Like I don't want to take away, but I feel that my energy is so big. Like I know that it's like really limitless. And if I focus on something for long enough, I somehow become a master of it. I don't know how it happens. It's just like, I learn it and then it's like, I know it and I can do it. And I just don't want it to like take over like our part together. Cause she like brought me into the theta stuff. And now I'm like, I'm going to do people too. <laughs> I don't want it to be like, I don't know, interfering. Okay, this is such a great question. Okay, so let's go back in time to the temples of Avalon, where you have all the priestesses gathered together, working with the people that come in to be healed. You have um, the, the high priestess of the temple. In the other times, which were more matriarchal, there was shared responsibility. The high priestess might choose to be the high priestess for many, many years, but there was always another high priestess there ready to take over at any time should they need a break. They each had their similar gifts because the, the ultimate goal was healing. The ultimate goal was to bring people to a place of healing. So in your individual worlds, you can offer you're going to do it differently. I mean, you may be trained similarly, but you're totally going to do this differently. Shaylee, you're going to approach things from that lunar perspective. Amber's going to approach them from a solar perspective. Um, you each have different gifts. How they flow through you is different. If you, you know, the temples didn't say, oh, hey, we only have room for one, one practitioner here. No, it's like all these women were trained because you work together. If there's, if there's a, a person, a client who works better with this type of energy, send them, refer, cross refer. The only time you get into trouble is when you think that it's the only thing you have and you have to hold on to it so fiercely that you think there's nothing else. And that's just not true. 
That's just not true. You have many gifts. Amber has many gifts. So if the bigger, if, if the bigger um, goal is to heal and to open to healing in new and powerful ways, then learn more, learn, learn it, do it, be it. And you can't take anything away from Amber. She's yeah, in her I flow. Feels, I feel like it feels like extra um, supportive. You know what I mean? Yeah. The combination exactly. of us understanding the same concepts. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Feel better to me. Yeah. Anyway, Shaylee, does that help? Yeah, definitely. It just was a weird space for me to be in because like I care about her and I'm like, oh God, like if I learn Theta and I start doing the same thing, like, is that going to be like rude to like <laughs> implement that into my session? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no, it won't be rude. I agree with Amber. It's, it's supportive because, you know, ultimately, you know, when I'm, when I'm mentoring people, yeah. Are they going far with the astrology? Yeah. Are they doing really well? Yes. They're doing great. Um, does that take away from my work? No, not really. Not really. It's just cool. All right. Now I have someone I can refer to when I get too busy or now but there's more than one, you know, there's just so you want to have everybody ready in the temple mm. to do the work. So that's how I look at it. Yeah, I love that perspective because I teach animal communication and I've never felt like my students take away from me at all. I just, yeah, I love being able to like refer out or like, yeah, okay. That's a good, that's a really good way to look at it. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. <laughs> good. All right. Any other thoughts or questions? I don't, I don't think so. So, oh wait one question are are our charts built to um when we learn something do we really have to experience it firsthand like can we study something and then like not have one of our animals get sick at the same time or like can I remember we, like, look this question I remember this question <laughs> um hmm. let me just think about that for a minute Hmm. It's a good question. I, I mean, theoretically, yeah, you shouldn't have to experience everything through, through your own body and life. But the truth is as a Taurus, so Taurus to Taurus. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> we get to experience it through our bodies. Pretty much. I'm kind of like thinking because that happens to me all like my strongest sense is like an animal sending me like a physical pain or an illness yeah. or whatever. Like it just all yeah. goes through my body. Yeah. But I guess that's why I wanted to ask about the analytical piece because mm -hmm. Amber and I, I feel like we both kind of learn in phases. Like we got really into the body for a while and we were like looking at horse anatomy and working with a body worker. And then we were here and there. So like, and I really love learning about like, the body of horses, mm -hmm. except for I got so analytical and so critical mm -hmm. about my horses that I had to completely stop learning about the body, which is like sad to me. So I guess like finding that balance and mm -hmm. I don't know if it's finding that balance together, or if that's just my own thing that I'm working through. <laughs> I think it's your thing that you're working through. I think that Capricornian energy really, um, it's awakening to your understanding that you you, you don't want the critical mind to get in the way of the gifts, but at the same time, understanding more and learning more actually supports your gifts. So it's finding the balance between the two. Being an empath, whether it's for a person or for a horse or a dog or a cat, um, is one way of getting the information. My guess is that you're going to be getting information not yeah, I don't think your body has to take the hit every time. And you know really what don't. I think too is why the theta stuff, if you get on to the, like when she does, when she takes you up and does the scans mm -hmm. like over and mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. like the way she does it, like really mm -hmm. gets you to like, it just like flows through and then it like clears. Mm -hmm. 
know what I mean? Like you get yeah. kind of disciplined about it, but I know you already kind of do that. Um, but there's something about that piece that like helped me because I was all like nah, in the beginning when I started doing it and I was like, oh my God, I'm like not going to be okay. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like I don't, I feel like I'm just like in a cloud. You know what I mean? Like that's I, your moon in Aquarius. I'm just like, I don't, I don't look at horses' bodies and go, look at all that. Dis-. And I'm like, why, do, why can everybody else see all that shit? And I'm like, I don't know. Like <laughs> if, if a horse is like <laughs> totally lame or upside down, I'm like, that one's probably fucked up here. You <laughs> should call Celeste or like you should. But yeah. like, I, so I get like kind of hard on myself about that when I'm like, oh, so I feel like I used to feel it and now it's like cloudier but like I I can tap into it if I really want to but it's not quite as like overwhelming for me anymore but then I sometimes see that as like oh my god I'm not as good as everyone else because it's not as clear for me which you know is not true so think about it this way both of you brought in a lot of gifts from past lives previous lifetimes incarnations and you 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 want to use as many of them as possible but you're going to specialize in in different things. And Amber, when you can just be you and let that healing energy flow through you, it's brilliant. You need to have permission. You need to create spaces where you have permission Mm -hmm. to share what you feel, Mm -hmm. what you sense, what you know, what you see. And same with you, Shaylee, same. It's the same. So when you're creating these times together, you're not going to step on each other's toes. You're going to help each other refine the offering. So the best thing you can do is turn it. Would you like to go first? Okay. You know, and just let one go first. And then would you mind if I stepped in now too? It's not about who does it better or who does it different. You know, it's, it's just The idea is the healing energy is flowing through both of you and you're bringing refinement to that energy. Now, you know, the body piece, Shaylee, talk to Rochelle. Um, She's got a lot of planets in Taurus. So she might, I ask her what she does about her body. I think that's why she runs so much actually, which I can't do. I'm not designed to run. So I do a lot of energy clearing all day long. I just clear, clear, clear. And my body takes a lot on and it's part of the Taurus thing. Does it have to be? Maybe not. I can just keep working on it, not being that, but the truth is Mm -hmm. it it is right now. So. Yeah. I do a lot of clearing all day long too, just because I can totally feel myself taking stuff on and Mm -hmm. Um, well, I just started this joint mobility training. So hopefully that's, mm, I feel like that, me, that it just like kept popping up on my Instagram and I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm meant to do this. So that's good. really where I'm at right now. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right. Well, hopefully that was just enough to kind of, I mean, I, I mean, what, I think you guys are great together and I love just be honest and authentic. There's no reason you can't be solar lunar but both Sagittarius energies so be very truthful honest alive with each other okay totally thank you you're welcome all right I hope you guys enjoyed a little look into our session so we were just chatting about all of the things that it sort of brought to the surface for us and the things that um I'd say the way that we work together is pretty organic and cohesive. And I think that's what people kind of pick up on in during the podcast. And also um, when we were doing live stuff, like the way we're the ability to flow, you know, was really, it was easy. And I think it's because we do this piece so much together. Um, And so we were just laughing about (laughs) the, the analogy of, um, when Denise was like, you know how you like to sit and you stare at the moon and you, you know, you know, that's like where Shaylee (laughs) lives. And I think I'm going to, I'll edit it in. Maybe I just this exact day before our appointment had sent Shaylee this video of my, a feather I had found, but my horse was walking down the trail, like freaking 90 miles an hour, like his little mohawk was like flipping it. And I'm like, 
I get on the trail with him and I feel like everything is cramping in my body because he walks so fast that it's just very jarring. And her whole analogy about, you know, like when you see a horse and it's going down the trail and I'm like thinking like, yeah, like my horse earlier, like an hour ago. <laughs> and then Shaylee being like, I love him. He's like always on a mission. And I was like, oh my God, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like how you were like is there anything we should be aware of of others and she was like well you're the sun and this happy like trail ride like go quickly and then Shaylee is like this dancing in the moonlight and like swaying back and forth and sometimes your sun is just shining very bright on the moon <laughs> that really made me laugh. what did she say I don't know it'll be in the call but your sun is right in this area your sun is pushing on her moon sometimes and I was like immediately triggering immediately triggering I'm too much for people abandonment <laughs> abandonment issues coming in hot and then she's like don't stop and I was like oh oh god okay <laughs> fuck okay don't stop it's like she's like she saw me immediately like oh no <laughs> it's so funny I know and I kind of felt like well how she was talking about like the energy work and like me doing like my sessions and stuff and then immediately I was like I, it triggered my like need to like not step on anybody's toes. And I was like, can I actually expand on animal communication and like still be doing my own thing? And like, it can coexist together. It's so funny how like we're hardwired to like immediately go to those insecurities and stuff. But I think the cool part about us is that we're really honest with each other. So even before like having a deeper insight on like where each other are at, like we're always able to be like, I can't and it's too much and not right now. And I think why it works is because neither one of us take it personal. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> and then return when things feel balanced and like we can, you know what I mean? I think that's like, I think that's the best part and why it works, even though there's other things like that. Yeah. And it was cool validation for both of us because we're both on like this fast track journey to like helping others find their purpose. And I've always felt like I was, I always felt like I was going to be an uplifter of sorts. Like I used to say that all the time, like I'm going to be an uplifter. And I remember having this mentor telling me like one day, like, well, is that really what you want to do? Cause some people don't want to be uplifted. And I was like, what? Like, no, I'm not even like thinking about that. And every energy work or like, um, well, I've never had this done. So this was super cool how it was like legitimately in my chart where she was like, you are here to like basically change the way that people are thinking. And like, um, I don't think she said alter humanity, but it was like something very like broad, right? Like you're changing the outlook and like making your voice known. And it's so interesting, like all of this coming out in such a timely way after the elements of connection clinic where I kind of discovered that I like don't believe in myself and she was like it's literally in your chart that like your karma or your whatever that your challenge in this lifetime is that you are not going to believe in yourself <laughs> and you're going to have to like prove to yourself that you and I'm like damn it there's that unworthy piece that I've been like fighting for like my entire life <laughs> right there. It's in my chart. And like, it is interesting how she lays your whole chart out and you almost feel like a sense of like overwhelm. And she told us like several times, like, this is your whole life. Let it happen as it needs to. And like, you have, I feel like in my mind, I was like, all of this needs to happen now. Like, oh my gosh, all of this is like so crazy. And I like forgot. The whole for October. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that piece was really cool. And then having that, um, the viewpoint of her, you know, saying like, I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of sessions with her over the years. And when you do a one-on-one -on -one session, she's really good about like giving you a timeline. And so you kind of know what to expect. She comes into my, um, breathe, believe, receive fascinating that receive is in there. And it never occurred to me till right this moment. <laughs> like that is the name of a program I have, and it never really felt as impactful as it did right this second. Um, anyways, she comes in monthly and does that the cosmic forecast and kind of helps people understand like what we're going to be going through for the month to kind of like mentally prepare you. 
but she's so tapped in um, and intuitive and the things she says are always so on point. And I had had a session with Jen and Robin before we did our first women's retreat. And when Robin went, she was like, that's when she told Warwick to go. And De- Denise wasn't really in the horse world at all. And she was like, I don't know what you do, but I see you reaching like millions of people. Like it's crazy. And it's one was before anything sort of had blown up for him. And he came back and he was just like, ah, like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, and it was just, so she's just so tapped in and she like knows, she knows the things. Um, and so it's fun to hear a perspective from someone who can just like put numbers into a chart and have it like here, let me tell you about all the things. It's, um, it's very cool. So yeah, that was fun. I feel like we just kind of wanted to share this with you guys because it's kind of a unique perspective into like the transparency of our friendship. And, um, we always kind of want to lead by example and remind you guys to like have transparency in, in every relationship and like, just be honest. We always joke that we like have no secrets. We're like, yeah, yeah, we have no secrets. Like we say everything, but like, it's really just because like the more honest you can be with like yourself, your horses, the people around you, like the more you get to just like have fun and show up for each other without like anxiety or negative emotion, like, and you can just I don't know, be who you are, which is ultimately like everyone wants to be seen. And I think that's why like we have so much fun in this friendship is because like both of us just like see each other for like who we are. And um, yeah, so that's why we did this. Well, I don't know if that's why we did this, but I'm feeling like that's why we did this. (laughs) And that's why we're sharing this on the pod. (laughs) Oh, if any of you guys have anything that felt like it resonated with you and you want to share, please do um, share and like the podcast, review it. I still haven't figured out how to make that happen, but if you do do it. Uh, If you guys want to dive deeper with Shaylee and I, you can come over to our membership, which is, we have another tea party coming up at the end of July, I believe. And um, we are receiving our book club um, books and getting started on that. And then we have some other guest podcasts coming up that are tucked away in there for you. Actually, there's like three or four built up in there right now that have not been released yet. So there's lots of goodies in there for you. So if you're interested, then click the link inside the show notes and we will see you guys in there. We also have a private Facebook group that goes with it, which is super cool and fun. So, all right. Bye. See ya.